Hey, Daniel Bach here for JumpScience.com. I'm talking about biarticulate muscles and synergy. Biarticulate is just a word for muscles that cross two joints. For example, the rectus femoris, one of your quad muscles, uh, crosses the front of the hip joint and the front of the knee joint. So it is both a hip flexor and a knee extensor. All right. Now, what biarticulate muscles do is create synergy between muscle groups. Let's uh, look at some examples. So. The glutes, right? The gluteus maximus, that's your big hip extensor. Uh, the rectus femoris is a hip flexor, so we could think of those as antagonists at the hip joint. However, uh, if you are extending the hips and the knees together, we get synergy. Because the glutes, by extending the hips, they are pulling the origin of the rectus femoris on the front of the pelvis away from its insertion point down in the tibia. So by extending the hips, the glutes are actually helping the rectus femoris to extend the knees. Okay, so that is uh, not antagonism, that is synergy. All right, now we can keep going. Uh, the quads, by extending the knees, they are pulling the uh, origin of the gastroc, uh, the big calf muscle back here, uh, away from its insertion point and in, down the Achilles tendon. All right, so by doing that, they are aiding the gastroc in performing ankle extension. All right. So uh, if we consider the glutes here, they're obviously hip extensors. Through the rectus femoris, they're knee extensors. And then through the rectus femoris and the gastroc, the glutes are actually ankle extensors as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the glutes are a very important muscle. But let's keep going. Uh, the quadriceps are obviously knee extensors, right? And then we've already talked about uh, Extending the knee also makes them uh, ankle extensors through the gastroc. But there's more. If we put in the hamstrings here, which are also biarticulate, they cross the back of the knee and the hip, so they're knee flexors and hip extenders. Um, the quads, by extending the knee, are pulling the insertion point of the hamstrings away from its origin on the back of the pelvis, uh, which means that they are helping the hamstrings to extend the hips. Okay, so your quads are knee extensors, they're ankle extensors through the gastroc, and through the hamstrings, they're also hip extensors. Uh, so maybe your quads are really important too. Okay, then the hamstrings are hip extensors, obviously. Uh, because they're hip extensors, they also help the uh, rectus femoris in extending the knee, which means they also help the gastroc in extending the ankle. So your hamstrings are really important too. So what we have is during triple extension of the hips, knees, and ankles, uh, we have a lot of synergy going on between all the muscle groups and not a lot of antagonism. All right, now the same is true if we're flexing all of these joints together. All right, I'm not going to spend as much time on this, but uh, if we put in the psoas, we've got a hip flexor, right, from the front of the pelvis down to the femur here. Uh, by flexing the hip, the psoas is helping the hamstrings to flex the knee, okay? Uh, by flexing the knee, the hamstrings are helping the rectus femoris to flex the hip. Then if we look at the gastroc, by flexing the knee, it's helping the rectus femoris also to flex the hip. And then if we put in uh, your anterior tibialis or your other dorsiflexion muscles, by flexing the ankle, these are gonna help the gastroc to flex the knee. So again, uh, when they're all flexing together, there's tons of synergy going on. So there's a few lessons we can learn from this. Uh, first of all, the quads are an extremely important muscle group, right? Um, somewhere along the line, people got so afraid of becoming quad dominant that they tried to start turning everything into a posterior chain exercise. And that is just a bad idea, okay? You need to train your quads. You need to use forward knee translation and knee loading in your strength training. Now on that same note, all your muscle groups are really important. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're in a sport that places a particularly high demand on uh, one muscle group, uh, that doesn't mean you can neglect the other ones. Okay, that, that muscle group that's under high demand is actually reliant on those other muscles more than you realize. Okay, so no matter what sport you play, you need to be strong everywhere, you need to be a well rounded, balanced athlete. Then, lastly, I want to talk about training transfer. All right. So in, in most of our athletic movements, like sprinting, jumping, cutting, throwing, things of this nature, uh, we have this simultaneous extension or simultaneous flexion of all three of these joints. 
Okay, so during our athletic movements, we have this synergy going on between the muscle groups. All right. Now, during more of uh, what most people would call like functional strength training, we also have that synergy. Okay, squatting, lunging, deadlifting, Olympic lifts, medicine ball throws, sled pushing, sled pulling, these types of things uh, also feature this synergy. And that means that the coordination between these muscle groups is going to have a lot of similarity uh, in the strength training compared to the athletic movements. All right, and that's why we get good carryover to athletic movements from the, the more functional strength training. However, if we start to uh, isolate flexion or extension at one of these joints, then we interrupt the synergy. For example, let's say I'm doing a seated knee extension. All my brain has to do here is send a whole bunch of nerve signals to the quads. Now that may put a really hard stimulus on the quadriceps muscles, but from a neurological standpoint, the coordination is not similar at all to uh, an athletic movement. So I'm not gonna get very good training transfer. Leg curl. All right, now I'm doing knee flexion without any other flexion, so I'm cutting out the synergy. Now let's say I do a, a slide board or a Swiss ball leg curl. Now I am uh, using the glutes at least to keep the hips extended, but uh, if I'm doing hip extension and knee flexion together, uh, then I'm cutting the quads out, okay? So I'm still not getting very good synergy, still not gonna be a whole lot of training transfer. Back extensions. I'm gonna be doing ankle and knee flexion a little bit to lock myself into the machine, but then I'm training hip extension. All right, so I'm mixing extension and flexion. Now I am working uh, a lot of the backside of my body here, but I'm cutting the quads out, so I'm interrupting that synergy. Not a lot of training transfer. And we could keep going with examples of this. All right, now my point is not that these exercises are bad, but you need to understand the purpose of them. The purpose is going to be to put a hard stimulus on a particular muscle group in order to structurally build up that muscle group. These types of exercises are not going to be particularly effective for strengthening our large scale extension or flexion patterns that we use for sports. To sum things up, Make sure your quads are strong, be a well-rounded, balanced athlete, and understand the purpose of the exercises that you're doing.